Well, welcome to part three of our Mixed Methods Research and Overview series. My name is Joe Gogler. I'm a long-term care professor in nursing and director of graduate studies at the Center on Aging at the University of Minnesota. So in part three of our, uh, of our, our series of conversations about mixed methods research, we're going to talk about some of the considerations of designing mixed method studies. Again, much of this is derived from, or at least inspired by, the 2010 publication by Cresswell and colleagues, Overview of Best Practices for Mixed Methods Research in the Health Sciences. So let's start with some general considerations. What do we need to think about before we conduct a mixed method study, really from oftentimes a pure feasibility standpoint. First are resources. Um, do we have the resources to actually do a mixed method study? So resources are certainly based on time. Um, oftentimes mixed methods require a lot of time to do. Um, certainly if one is uh, say proposing a sequential mixed method study where you have one strand followed by another. But secondly, too, the time involved in analyzing the two strands of data and then finally merging them together provide, offer uh, or actually pose investigators with additional complexities as well. Do you have the time as an investigator to do that? Secondly, in terms of resources, uh, do you have the people resources? Do you have the expertise on your team, if not yourself, to effectively conduct a mixed method study? I think there are very few of us that can say with any degree of confidence that I can go out in the field and I can do a rigorous quantitative study as well as a qualitative study. Oftentimes we'll need multiple individuals with varying levels of expertise to do that. And then perhaps even more importantly, how do we actually propose that team will work together effectively? Um, so again, these are key considerations. And then finally, and related to the first two, is a, a, a matter of finances. Do you have the financial resources to transcribe qualitative transcripts? Do you have the financial resources to actually um, support someone to conduct your quantitative analyses if you don't necessarily have the expertise to do so? Um, again, these are key factors related to considering whether one can actually feasibly conduct a strong high, uh, uh, mixed method study of high quality and rigor. So also included in this first bullet were the research problem and rationale. And as I, we had discussed uh, to, to, to a great extent in the prior uh, uh, modules, is, is your mixed method study driven by a research problem? And do you have a strong rationale for why you're conducting a mixed method study? And I would uh, basically direct you, the viewer, to uh, parts one and two to get a better grasp and a more in-depth understanding for why a research problem should be driving whether you're considering conducting a mixed method study or not, and then importantly, what are some other rationales you should be considering when really describing to a reviewer, uh, describing to someone else, say a dissertation committee member, why am I doing mixed methods? I mean, what is the point? What, is, what does a mixed method study really add to answering my question? And it's very important to think through that deliberately before even employing a mixed method study. Second are the study aims. Um, so within your aims, uh, perhaps even within your questions, do you have, say, a aim that aligns with a qualitative strand, an aim that aligns with a quantitative strand, and then finally an aim that mixes them together? Now that's fairly simplistic. Sometimes it's not so straightforward to have a qual aim, a quant aim, and a mixed methods aim. But again, showing the reviewer showing whoever you're proposing your research to or disseminating your research to that, in fact, it's a very deliberate choice as to why we're conducting a mixed method study um, and that this mixed method study is driven by our questions, our aims are critical. Second, the methods. Um, when will quantitative and qualitative data be collected? How will they be integrated and analyzed? So again, are you designing a concurrent mixed method study where essentially one strand will be collected at the same time as the other? Or are you planning or proposing a study that actually sequential? One strand follows the other. Um, these are key considerations um, when designing a mixed method study. Um, as we talked about here, and then certainly as we talked about in parts one and two, considering how the mixed methods design aligns with your question and aims. So really relying upon your question and aims to dictate 
the type of mixed methods design that you're planning to conduct. I think that's really important and that tends to lead to the most coherent, cohesive mixed methods designs versus oftentimes and sometimes it's, it's the reverse. And in those instances, it's not always as clear, at least to me, when I'm appraising mixed methods study, um, Again, why is mixed methods occurring in this particular uh, study? And uh, how did the design best uh, address the questions or aims of interest? And then finally, via analysis and interpretation, demonstrate how mixed methods helped you to address the question aim of interest. Again, where many mixed me method studies fall, or at least studies that call themselves mixed methods, is that they don't effectively integrate the various strands together. Whether that integration occurs in transforming data to basically blend data sources together and then conduct an analysis, whether it's even as simple as within a results section or even a discussion, contrasting and comparing the results that emerge from the two strands in a cohesive way. If that's not done, then again, what you have is you have this kind of siloing effect where it appears almost as if the two studies are being conducted with very little uh, integration between the two. And again, it's much more easier said than done. I mean, it, it kind of sounds like, well, why would anyone do that? But in fact, when one is actually at the point of analysis of different strands, trying to integrate them together is, is a fairly complicated endeavor. And if there's one aspect of mixed method studies where at least I feel like they tend to to, if not fail, maybe tend to uh, be weakened, it's in that, that, uh, that area, this whole point of interface or integration. So there are really three elements to think about when designing a mixed method study. It is timing, which we've talked about. Is it happening at the same time or before and after, or are they happening sequentially? Priority, is there one strand that takes priority of, over the other, and we'll, we'll, we'll present some examples here in subsequent slides. And then finally, the point of interface. Where and how are the qualitative and quantitative strands blending together? And there are, again, many, many ways and strategies to do that, um, and we'll provide some design examples here in subsequent slides. So this is a, a very helpful table um, from a, a textbook by Questwell and Plano Clark that really helps us understand the types of designs that we're presenting to reviewers or readers of our research. And they offer some really helpful shorthand here. And much of the shorthand was derived from a really classic mixed methods study, a mixed methods paper conducted by Janice Morris, a very well-known methodologist in 1991, of how can we describe our mixed methods design in text. And you see some of the examples here in the first column. Uh, we, can, uh, we can refer to our strands vis-a-vis -vis shorthand, quan, and qual, okay? And then uh, we're talking about this whole idea of priority. If we're prioritizing one strand over another, you capitalize that strand. Third row, um, if one is de-emphasizing a particular strand or this strand has lesser priority in the design, that's probably a better way to, to think about it, then one uses lo all lowercase letters. Um, when we're talking about timing, a plus sign uh, refers to a concurrent design, an arrow sign refers to a sequential design. Parentheses are those designs that are embedded. And now an embedded design is a little bit more tricky to understand, at least in my experience, but basically this is where a method is embedded within a larger design or procedure or mixed within a theoretical or program objective framework. Um, again, when alluding to that, one uses parentheses. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to present some examples from my own work to you about what I consider an embedded design. Double arrows is methods are implemented in a recursive process. This is where maybe one is going back and forth between conducting qualitative and qualitative elements within a study design. I don't see this as much, but it's a little more complex way to design a mixed method study. Um, brackets is when you have multi-phase types of studies. This is where mixed methods is used within a single study or project within a series of studies. So the example I always like to utilize is large-scale program evaluations that often have multiple phases, and mixed methods are being used within each of those phases. And then finally, in equal signs, um, this is the purpose for mixing methods. So in this case here, in this example, in the final row, you have a sequential design. This is called a sequ uh, this is basically a quantitative strand that is followed by a qualitative strand. And basically, the purpose of doing this is to better explain the results. Um, so in this case, one would imagine and this researcher is utilizing a qualitative strand to explain what was going on in the quantitative strand, whether it's a survey, whether it's a randomized control trial, something similar.